Yo, what's going on guys? And today I want to talk about Nauru, an island that you may or may have not heard about. So Nauru is a unusual and precarious social economic situation that a lot of people know as the you know natural resource curse and they were basically known now as the country that has the fattest population in the world and i feel like that's just a misrepresentation of the island and i just want to talk about today what happened what led to this and understanding the important reasons why nauru is in the destructive toll that it is today now how many people have learned about this i don't know it's a combination of declining phosphate prices the high cost of maintaining an international airline and the government's financial mismanagement combined led to the economy collapsing in the late 1990s and since the start of the new millennium nauru has been virtually bankrupt so let's get in today's video and talk about the history of nauru thank you for joining me today as we delve into this topic that demands our attention and compassion if you guys want more videos like this please hit that like and subscribe and go into the description to follow me on x or instagram they're always there now the description disruption that's a weird word the destruction and collapse of the beautiful island nation of nauru is something that i will attempt to shed light on and talk about what has befallen on this small pacific nation and the urgent need for people to realize what's going on and not be known as the fattest nation in the world. Nauru, once a beautiful tropical paradise, has experienced a tragic transformation over the years. It's a story that serves as a cautionary tale, a stark reminder of the environmental, economic, and social challenges faced by vulnerable nations across the globe especially ones that are resource rich like Nauru was. Let us by start talking about Nauru's environmental plight. The island, like many others in the Pacific, has been severely impacted by climate change, rising sea levels, extreme weather events, and the ocean's acidification have taken a toll on Nauru's delicate ecosystem. Coastal erosion threatens homes and in their infrastructure, while changing weather patterns disrupt agriculture, which is a vital source of their livelihood as they can't really import as much. The exploitation of Nauru's natural resources have further exacerbated its woes. Once known for its rich phosphate deposits, Nauru's now, nothing like what it was, as they experienced a boom in the mid 20th century, fueled by phosphate mining, I guess surge you would say. However, this economic windfall was short lived and the ecological consequences have been lasting. Strip mining scarred the landscape, leaving large swaths of the island uninhabitable. They have these like pinnacles that stick up as you're seeing throughout the video. They're like these rock pinnacles, they're called, and they're just there, just the, the leftovers of excessive mining and destruction. The economic collapse that followed the depletion of phosphate reserves has left Nauru in a precarious state. A once prosperous nation now grapples with unemployment, poverty, and a lack of economic diversity. The over-reliance on a single resource has proven to be a perilous path highlighting the importance of sustainable development and the need for global cooperation in helping a country like this face the economic challenges that it has. Social issues have compounded the country's struggle. The collapse of the economy has strained social services, leading to the health and educational crisis many of us know that this country faces, that the cigarette smoking, the overweight, and just the sheer short life expectancy that they have. And this is affecting their mental and physical health of the population that is at risk. And the education that future generations have 
might not be there. And for a lot of people who don't know this, there's these camps that are there due to this agreement that they have with Australia that Australia just basically sends their the guys, their the basically refugees, people seeking asylum, just to sit there in limbo. And this country is like basically a giant hotbed. There's no cover. They destroyed all the foliage due to this mining. And you you go there and there's it's just completely destru- destroyed. And it's really, really, really sad. I mean, the, supposedly the crime rate's really, you know, really, really low. But other thing is that the Japanese occupied Nauru from August 26, 1942 to September 13, 1945. And the Japanese military just absolutely got bombarded during the during the end of the war. And it completely destroyed infrastructure in Nauru. And part of the, the problem there is that You know, the depend it all comes back to the dependence of phosphate exports. And now lots of countries with significant natural resources have been screwed up by the people managing managing them. So it's not uncommon to you know garner the name for a country like this the resource curse. And we've seen it with Venezuela, Nigeria, and Libya, but it's just much more grand because Nauru did have one of the world's first sovereign wealth funds in 1968 which was designed for the specific purpose of diversifying the country's wealth away from unrenewable bird poop guano. And it was called the Nauru Phosphate Royalties Trust. And it peaked at nearly $2 billion for a country of 15,000 people. And it was primarily primarily invested in real estate, but also some road projects like the West End musical series devoted to Leonardo da Vinci. And the musical is widely considered one of the worst musicals ever played with reportedly nearly all the audience leaving before it finished on first production the fund was known for being exceptionally corrupt and extremely poor managed which investments due to due diligence trips were literally more than poorly disguised luxury vacations to the bahamas and this was made worse by the rapid collapse of guano aka bird poop prices due to the advancements of artificial fertilizers overmining of the bird poop deposits a public health crisis sparked by obesity, a poor government budget management that necessitated drawing down on the fund frequently, and the decline of the Australian dollar against the United States dollar. By 2005, the fund had less than $200 million in it. And by the way, that was all in Australian dollars. So Nauru is actually doing much better today, but the country is no longer reliant completely on aid and the economy has pivoted towards a mix of tuna and outsourced refugee management for the government of australia and they also have a new sovereign wealth fund which is managed by the government of australia and taiwan to stop them from misusing it and it's it's crazy because now is known as an island off the australian coast famed for its wildlife plants people and above all that like i've talked about all video the phosphate mines and at one point, you know, the phosphate mining business was so rich and profitable that Nauru was one of the wealthiest countries per capita. They bought planes, airlines, Lamborghinis, and all that, you know, eventually lost when the mine dried out and the, the airlines petered into nothingness. The real estate investments were terrible. And the play that we talked about was a bomb. So it's interesting to look at this because, again, I think when we look at... I guess you would say that it isn't an island off the coast of Australia. It's a butt farther. But again, it's a great story of understanding what can happen in countries that, you know, theoretically have it all. So let me hear your thoughts down below.